laser tissue interaction. Now, why we need that laser should be interacted with tissue because we need certain effects. Why are we using laser? We need certain effects. Now, laser can act on tissue, cell and organelle, which will be the biologic level of interaction for it. And the mechanism of action, mechanism of action and consequences can be a photochemical effect, a photobiomodulating effect, a photothermal effect or a photo disruptive effect. Now, out of which you can get three biological responses that can be long-term healing, that can be delayed response or any immediate physical effect. Now, the, when your laser energy irradiates tissue, uh, the resulting effect will be mapped on somewhere on the cube. Now, what defines a good soft tissue surgical laser can be your efficient cutting or ablation at the same time, sufficient hemostasis and coagulation which can be achieved by a non-surgical laser also. So with these, these two effects are highly desirable during your clinical practice and interaction with the biologic tissue. Now, laser beam interacts with the tissue. To, these four uh, results can be seen. You can have a hyperthermia of the tissue, which is at a particular 37 to 50 degrees centigrade. If laser is being used on the tissue at a higher temperature for a constant period of time, there can be coagulation above 60 degree. If you, you start using laser without any stoppage, then vaporization of the water droplets takes place from the tissue, which ultimately would lead to carbonization and char formation. Now, this is very important when you are undergoing a soft tissue laser interaction. A photothermal laser tissue interaction can be absorption, ablation and coagulation. Di diode lasers are unable to optically cut the tissue. To incise the tissue, a diode laser must be initiated. A dark pigment or an articulating paper is used to initiate the teeth. Tip, as I already told you, diode has an affinity for a particular chromophore. So this dark material will act as a chromophore and absorb all the energy and all the photons, preventing it from leaving the fiber. The fiber tip heats up and is so-called a hot tip. It is this hot tip which incises or cuts your tissue. So it is very important to work in a contact or a non-contact mode. Depends upon your spot size, power density and exposure time. Now this is a contact mode. When you touch the uh, tip of the fiber using uh, in the direct contact. And in a non-contact mode, you keep the tissue, uh, keep the handpiece away from the a tissue and the guide is provided to focus at the beam at the desired target tissue. Now, if you uh, let, let's take an example, imagine three watt laser power is del delivered one mm from the target tissue. Now, move the handpiece five millimeter away from the tissue. Power remains the same, but it is more dispersed and it is diverged. The beam is diverged due to the wider area. So, the bigger spot size at the tissue, we increase the spot size. While as working near to the tissue, we are decreasing the spot size. So, why is this spot size important? Because when you have a larger spot size, that, that's, in, that's almost a non-contact nose, you will have decreased penetration, but increased width of cut and less coagulation. The coagulation will be less. Whereas if you are working in a smaller spot size or a near to the tissue that is in mostly in contact mode, then you have a decreased width of cut, increased penetration, a deeper penetration into the epithelial and subepithelial layers, more cutting and less coagulation. So you have to manage what are you working on gradually with experience. Diode lasers are usually contact devices, a tip much touched the tissue. Diode lasers are fiber optic contact devices. Moving the tip away from tissue seizes all laser tissue interaction and does not affect the spot size. For a fixed laser beam of diameter or the spot size, the volume of tissue exposed to laser beam is proportional to the optical absorption depth. For example, shorter absorption depth, that means less energy is required to cut your tissue or ablate the tissue. When you have a longer absorption depth, greater volume of irradiated tissue, therefore more energy is required to ablate the tissue. Now, how do we uh, use uh, laser devices as for hemostasis and coagulation? Uh, 
your all diode lasers ranging from 800 to 1000 nanometers do not cut using a laser beam except for very darkly pigmented tissue instead the diode laser heats up the end of the fiber optic glass tip between 500 to 900 degrees celsius the hot glowing tip is an excellent coagulator and then conducts heat to your target tissue but inefficient in cutting so what do we do uh, they are thermo mechanical cutting devices their uh, depth and coagulation depends upon the diode glass tip charring which can range from sub millimeter to multi millimeter that's what i told you when you are using a fresh diode laser tip you need to initiate it either with a cork or either with a, a black pigmented paper or with an articulating paper so that the darker pigment absorbs all the laser light and the uh, uh, and the heat is uh, uh, concentrated on the laser tip so that you directly transmit that heated device onto the tissue something like this if you have this uh, uh, diagram or if you have see the figure uh, look at the third figure it's a hot glass tip heat diffusion from the hot tip takes place and this will be the diameter of the tip so that you can have better coagulation depth in your uh, soft tissue like in the uh, uh, literature i have mentioned dental diode uh, near infrared laser wavelengths are not suitable for oral tissue soft cutting instead the tissue is cut thermo mechanically on contact with a charred glass hot tip first in optical dark carbonized material uh, like burnt ink or burnt cork wood is deposited on the very end of the glass tip the optical energy of diode laser heats up your charred glass fiber tip to 900 degree celsius to 1500 degree celsius as a result soft tissues are heated up through heat conduction or diffusion from the hot glass tip to and through the soft tissue the cutting speed of such glass hot tip which is charred is limited by its disintegration at elevated temperatures thus raising uh, the concerns about biocompatibility of burnt tip chemicals in thermally fractured glass so you have to make sure you give your tissue a thermal relaxation time also now uh, i am not discussing the graph of lately very deeply but i'll tell you on the y axis is the co coagulation depth and on the uh, on the x axis is the coagulation depth and on the y axis it's the diameter and tip to tissue contact time in seconds now if you uh, look, look at uh, the above uh, graph it says a uh, photothermal coagulation depth that means point between 0.3 to 0.03 to 0.04 seconds in particular let's say around 5 mm we get this is gingival blood vessel diameters so we get a photothermal effect but if you do not uh, give your tissue a relaxation time then irreversible tissue damage can takes place if you look at the second this is the y axis with the time excessive with the temperature look at this optical window in between uh, 10 sec 1 to 10 seconds at 55 to 60 degree desirable effects are obtained which we require that is photothermal and absorption but if you start using it for let's say minutes and hours an irreversible tissue damage takes place which we don't have to do so uh, there are certain tips which i quickly will uh, summarize the so called initiation or activation that is placing the light absorbing char layer on the tip before surgery and maintaining such char layer on the tip such as dragged into the tissue and controlling the effects of light absorbing charge char at the end, tip of the end so you have to make, make sure on these factors your soft tissue ablative devices work partially transmitting diode laser fiber tips irradiates the soft tissue with near infrared laser radiation which is not conducive for ablation and cutting but it is a good coagulator whose depth and width are affected by the fluent and tissue and wavelength dependent absorption and scattering properties now suppose you have an optically leaky tip you don't have not initiated the tip or your tip is too old you multiply initiating that tip you have to change that surgical tip but you did not do that 
so then you have will have a problem of thermal necrosis as well as mechanically tearing the tissue because now it is not heating up properly now overheating of the tip may reduce uh, result in fractures of the glass within the tissue now biocompatibility of the uh, fiber can be compromised if you are heating the device too much or if you are using non sterile inks or tip initiators now thermo thermomechanical thresholds for fracturing of the glass tip at 500 to 900 degree celsius uh, can also lead to fragment fragmentation of the glass particles which is invisible to the naked eye then your user skill and technique is also very important when you are using uh, and the tip tissue contact time and hand speed is also important when you are using a hot glass tip for a diagnosis thermal relaxation time is extremely important parameter when you are using a high power infrared lasers tissue cooling from blood flow during laser exposure is insignificant for short pulse duration especially when tissue coagulation takes place underneath the ablated tissue instead cooling efficiency of the tissue irradiated by laser light is determined by thermal conductivity or diffusivity to dissipate the heat away from irradiated tissues now you should not excessively use the laser in a continuous mode and keep heating the tissue give tissue a relaxation time which is highly desirable and you will get better biologic effects as compared to your continuous mode now when you are using laser you can use laser in two modes that is emission modes how is laser emitted that is can be emitted as a continuous wave mode as long as you foot pedal of the laser is depressed there is continuous beam of the laser energy hitting the tissue it is very efficient when you are incising and excising any tissue however it is damaging because it is the tissue is continuously bombarded with the laser energy without giving it any relaxation time now there can be a gated pulse mode or a free running pulse mode also in the pulsed mode of the laser now this is periodic alteration of laser energy being on and off similar to your blinking of the eye mode can be achieved by opening or closing of the shutter in beam path all surgical laser or devices that operate in continuous mode have this feature also after a, a certain span of time when you will using in pulse mode it automatically switches off so that giving the tissue a relaxation time free running pulse mode can be referred to as true pulse uh, mode also the emission is unique to laser devices where large peak of energy are emitted usually for microseconds they are more common for rvm laser that is all tissue laser with each pulse now they have a pulse high peak power or in hundreds and thousands of watts are generated increased surgical precision is achieved in with free running pulse mode so example are erbium lasers now these are the terminology which you will uh, always come across when you are using a laser that is a duty cycle now i have already told you you can use your laser in continuous wave mode or a pulse mode duty cycle refers to the amount of laser beam which is emitted from the laser if you are using it in a continuous wave mode the duty cycle becomes 100% because it duty cycle is the number of times the laser is on upon the number of times the laser is off that is t on upon t off which is 100% it is a measurement of laser pulses per second which can be measured in hertz hertz is the number of pulses per second also known as repetition rate and pulse rate when you are using in a pulse mode your duty cycle becomes 50% the t on upon t off becomes half Peak power is defined as the amount of power in each pulse of the laser. Average power dis describes the amount of power hitting the laser when the laser is used in the pulse mode. Now, the machine can be total of x amount of wattage, but that wattage will not be delivered to the tissue in a whole amount. It will always be delivered in the average power. 